Good day dear students, this is a video on renal transport processes. First I will be drawing a tubular epithelial cell. That is an epithelial cell lining the tubular part of the nephron. This epithelial cell which is slightly convoluted and so it has a brush border. The second epithelial cell, the two epithelial cells look like a pack of soda pack of pepsi cans or coca-cola cans and in between them are the intercellular junctions which is the tight junction so the epithelial cell lining the renal tubule and you know the two membranes apical membrane and basolateral membrane apical membrane is the one facing the lumen and basolateral membrane is the one facing the blood Basolateral membrane is the one facing the blood. Tubular fluid flows along the apical membrane. The first transport process is the operation of the basolateral sodium potassium ATPase pump. That is primary active transport. So I will be drawing the sodium potassium ATPase pump. This is a sodium potassium ATPase pump. It is an iron pump. And its main function is to pump out three sodium ions out of the cell against the electrical gradient and drive in two potassium ions into the cell. Sodium concentration is high in the extracellular fluid, yet against its electrochemical gradient, it drives the sodium ions out into the cell, out of the cell. That is why it is an active transport and primary active because energy is used directly by ion pumps in the process of transport itself. Energy is used directly by ion pumps in the process of transport itself. So the sodium potassium ATPase pump pumps out three sodium ions from the cell, transports two potassium ions into the cell, transports sodium ions against the concentration gradient with the use of energy. So this is primary active transport. Why is it primary active? Active because sodium ions are transported against their concentration gradient. So the energy is derived that is the energy is used by ion pumps. These ion pumps, as we have learned previously, are integral membrane proteins and they use this energy directly, directly in the process of transport itself. Directly in the process of transport itself. Then there is a, on the apical side, another interesting thing occurs. The lowering of sodium concentration facilitates downhill. Downhill is along the concentration gradient movement of sodium. So this is the apical carrier, carrier mediate second reactive transport. There is downhill movement of sodium. This sodium movement does not require energy and the energy liberated is used to drive the uphill, uphill meaning against concentration gradient movement of glucose, uphill meaning against concentration gradient movement of glucose. This is secondary active transport. This is secondary active transport.
like glucose, amino acids, phosphate and lactate also transported along with sodium. Secondary active because the energy is derived indirectly from ionic gradients created by the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Please remember, why is it secondary active transport? This is an important point in this video. Energy is derived indirectly from ionic gradients created by the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Ionic gradients created by the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Along the basolateral and apical membrane, also there are channels. There could be glucose channels, there could be sodium channels, there could be potassium channels. We know very well that channels mediate facilitated diffusion. Channels mediate facilitated diffusion. Channels mediate facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion is a passive process which occurs downhill but it is mediated by a channel by a transport protein. And this facilitated diffusion of water is mediated by water channels which are called as aquaporins. Transcellular movement of water is mediated by water channels which are called as aquaporins. And finally, there is paracellular movement of water through the leaky tide junctions. Paracellular movement of water through the leaky tide junctions. Please remember that tide junctions get tighter as we move along the nephron. The tide junctions get tighter as we move along the nephron. So in the proximal tubule and in the thick ascending limb, there is movement of water slight movement through leaky tight junctions and these tight junctions are very tight in the distal nephron so they don't allow water to pass unless it moves to the cell in the presence of ADH So, transcellular movement of water, that is facilitate diffusion of water, mediated by aquaporins, paracellular movement of water, and finally, five, that is, as water moves, solvent is dragged along with it, which is known as solvent drag. So solvent also moves along the paracellular route so to sum up there is primary active transport which is transporting out three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell secondary active transport of sodium with glucose and amino acids, secondary because it is secondary to ionic gradients created by sodium potassium ATPase pump, mainly facilitated diffusion and others. Thank you so much.